Michael, what's up today? What's up, Buck? Here's here's what's up. Manny Machado. All right, mm -hmm. so he, he did an interview with Ken Rosenthal, who, who I really respect, and the interview was in The Athletic, and he said, you know what, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not Johnny Hustle, I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, not, I'm not, the type, uh, not the type of guy that runs hard, I just don't do that, that's not me. He said and he wants to do it, he, he just can't. He said he wants to do it, he just can't. What was your experience with him, Buck? Was he that guy who could not hustle? No, not really. You know, the game, uh, and he was good. I mean, you know, talent plays, guys. I mean, he's as talented a player as I've ever had. I mean, it's just, I know uh, one of the problems with him at third base, sometimes the guy would actually get bored. I mean, that's why, you know, we didn't have a shortstop, so he had to play shortstop for us uh, for a while after we lost Hardy. And he's a good shortstop, but uh, he's so he's good at third base, and I think that uh, I've ever seen. And Brooks Robinson said that in Baltimore. He He's just so impactful there. And uh, but Manny, you know Manny, uh, you know did he not score from second on a single in a meaningful situation because he wasn't running hard? Did he not try to score from first on a double? It's you know he's a guy that plays every day and there's a certain gate to his game that uh, um, you know it, it aesthetically doesn't look good. You know I understand that sometimes. You know people ask, "Geez, Buck, it never really happened." In Baltimore. We we had plenty of private conversations. I've had him since he was 20 years old, and you know other managers in our system have had him. But man, he's man, he's uh, you know he's uh, not malicious. He's not uh, you know when you really break down what he's saying, what is he really saying? That a lot of people probably feel the same way, but just don't voice it. Um, so you know he's cut his teeth in the American League East. I mean this is a guy that's you know, tested through uh, the Fenway Parks, the Yankee Stadiums, the Sky Domes in Toronto. I mean, this guy, uh, you know, he's answered a lot of questions about whether he can handle it, that's for sure. Now, you know, you, you managed here. You understand how New York is, Buck. And Gary Sanchez, who's a great player, getting eviscerated daily on talk shows for not hustling down the first base line. Uh, it becomes such a thing. So how do you think he would play in New York? As great as he is... But that 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and not busting it down the first baseline in the midst of a five-game losing streak, how do you think that's going to play in New York? Well, you're assuming it's going to happen, first of all, and, and um, that's yet to be seen if he ends up there. But, uh, uh, you know, how did it work out for Gary Sanchez? And I don't think, you know, you guys are around him a lot more than I do. But, uh, you know, sometimes it can be good. I know when I managed in New York, there were a lot of things that I thought the, the tenor of the stadium and the fans helped you helped you as a manager, uh, you know, where you run into problems when a guy doesn't care what anybody thinks. And Manny does care what people think to, to an extent. He, uh, you know, he's, he's answered a lot of questions about some of the pressure that, you know, whether it's Fenway Park and they're throwing at him or some of the things that, uh, and he'll be first to tell you, some of them are self-inflicted, but he takes on that responsibility and he likes to compete. I mean, he, I saw him stick his nose right back in the, over the plate after Sale had thrown at him at 100 miles an hour and hit a ball over the, the wall. I mean, this is a guy that uh, you put him in that situation. He like there's a lot of guys that don't want to be the guy. He's okay with being the guy that, uh, uh, whether it's uh, a villain or whatever, someone might want to paint him as. I mean, this, this kid's uh, he's got a great wife. The is as good as they come. I mean, this is not a guy that's running the streets. He, he loves to stay at home in the off season. And if you want to find Manny, he, you know, he likes that home nation, so to speak. And you know, he's going into a, you know the toughest league there is. Let's face it, guys. There's probably four teams in the from the American League that could have beat the Dodgers in the World Series. That's how good a, I think the chasm between the two leagues has become. Now, okay, forget about like not running the first or standing and looking at a ball during the World Series that hit off the wall and got a single, but he has another bit of a reputation, Buck, and I want to ask you straight out, is he a dirty player? You know, Mike, the only thing that I thought that, you know, the, the play at first base... Uh, With or, Aguilar? Yeah, uh, I, that, that, was, that was one that, uh, you know, Right. There's, there's not really any way to defend that. You know, the stuff with Pedroia at second base, you know, that's one thing we're trying to change on the competition committee is, you know, we have these slick plastic bases that are get wet. They get hard when it's cold. And uh, he just bounced off there. And because it was Pedroia and, you know, there was a lot of, you know, I, I know what Manny personally thought. We talked about it many times. And he understood what it looked like and what have you. But I understand, too, that a lot of these things seem to happen to him or, or get drawn to him. And people say, okay. There it is again. I, I don't look at it that way. I think, 
you know, as a manager, that's your job to take very talented players and try to keep them on as on a good a path as you can. And Aaron's very good at that. You know, my question would be, what would happen to Andahar and and Gleiber? And you know, there's they got some good young players over there. I thought they did as good a job as any with a big payroll to make it feel like the little engine that could. They've got some good young players coming behind them, and that's kind of who they are. And they're very close to being as good as the Red Sox. Now, Machado, right-handed. They've got a lot of right-handers. As you said, they've got a very good third baseman in Andujar that needs to grow into being a better defender. So does acquiring a Manny Machado automatically make the Yankees better? Is he the right fit for the Yankees? Well, I don't know. That's that's for them. They've got you know nobody's you know Brian Cashman's been great at adding the right pieces to to uh, uh, a clubhouse that that needs the right pieces. Um, that'll be something for them to decide. I mean, I, I have my own personal feelings about it, but I will say this: talent plays. And uh, Manny, Manny likes to win. He likes to be part of that. Manny loves baseball. He loves coming to the park. He loves the competition. He loves the the back and forth with his teammates and whatever. This is not some guy that's going to sit around like a wallflower. He he loves everything about playing the game, and he's got a real zest for it. I, I've always wondered, and I've heard rumors, and you, know, you had him in your clubhouse for six years. D does he have a secret desire to play for the Yankees? It's I, I hear sources say that he's always wanted to play for the Yankees. Did you sense that, Buck? No, he, and he certainly wouldn't voice it to, the, to his manager if he did. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Uh, it's not something. You know, Manny's going to be fine wherever he ends up, and um, you know he's going to make that club, uh, you know, better. I mean, that's that's obvious. But you know, uh, what people have to ask themselves at what price monetarily, and what it means for some other young players that might be playing that same position. Now, there's a lot of people would like to have the problem the Yankees have. They have the money to spend, and they got players that can play that position if they don't want to go in that direction. All right, I got to ask you this, and this is a tough question. Oh, the other ones weren't mine? No, no these are easy. not even close. You, you've danced beautifully. But here, here, <laughs> here's the question. There are people that managers love to manage. They love them. I mean, they, they like seeing them. They like talking with them. Did you enjoy managing Manny Machado, oh, yeah. or was of it a chore? Of course I did. You know how smart he made us look? And when he left, I got dumber and dumber, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's how it works. You know, you don't mind doing the things that managers have to do. Uh, I love to talk to him about, you know, Manny's a guy that uh, he wants to wear. You know, he's going to have a little different shoe. I mean, he's going to, he likes, uh, he, he doesn't mind the limelight in a good way. You know, a lot of people shirk that and they just want to, you know, not have the responsibility that commitments and contracts and, and responsibilities that come with it. He's okay with that. But I love, uh, you know, he helped me out with my music, you know, about what I need to be up to date on. Uh, you know, I, I got to the point where I, you know, would talk to him about some of the spring training workouts and things. I mean, Manny had two kneecaps tapped tack down. I mean, there were some things that he had to go through. He's a physically healthy guy. I've never seen anybody be able to create the torque on his arm moving away from a target. It's kind of one reason he's so loose-jointed in his shoulders and his elbows and his knees. And it hasn't been an issue yet. And I think he's a physically fit guy. Um, he's got a lot of pride in what he puts in his body. Um, you're not going to have to worry about him uh, with off-the-field things that a lot of people get challenged with. And uh, He's, you know, he's, he's going to be a, a good addition for somebody, that's for sure.